I don't know. But I, I'm going to try it. We yeah, really do full core press now. I mean, I get met, yeah from the union all kind of mail, like you know, from the council. And, yeah, you hear the videos. I don't know. I think it's just. I'm gonna. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I've talked with them. I've had a meeting with yeah. them, and then I'm, I'm gonna go in and check it out. Check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait just a little bit more. Uh, uh, little uh, 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Just like in the yeah, yeah. One thing I'm, I'm trying to remember if I noticed virtual virtually when you're on. Zoom, geez, I can't remember if I see that or not. Yeah. Are you sharing it right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Everything else goes well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. 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 Someone in our group knows Vince. Somebody in the group knows me. Nice to have you going down. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not paying actual, attention to anything, right? Except what I want to pay attention to. Uh, Jack is here. Brian, I don't know. Are you? Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, we still have money in there in that pot. So next week, are we topping? Well, that was kind of the idea. Topping the pot. We could do it. Well, he's not here. I don't know how much he's in the box. Lori, and now further, it smaller box. We've done pretty good. I mean, she's done a lot of It's kind of a three thousand. Well, April, it's cheaper. Somebody grabbed it. Well, don't want to take the money out of the bank. But the thing is, and you'll appreciate this. I mean, Brian will appreciate it. But here's the uh, you know, just like yeah, yeah, they 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 which we happen to have yeah, 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 it was worth it as we were yeah, doing uh, the uh, coin plan. Oh, yeah. yeah. But since we're not modern, that I don't even know. So nobody's done it before. Even, even the non future okay. president is bigger than the worst. Yeah, exactly. It's given work. Yeah. What the hell are the foreign house advice? Fine. Which comes to the um, we need to decide who are the you know, it's not fun to think about that. It's not fun to think about that. It's not fun to think about that. It's not fun to think about I didn't do it. No. No. Well, so uh, we should have a free to talk to the city and find out. I know. I heard that part. She's going to reach out to the city about how we could be able to get into the the dream team not my response no i'm just no i I'm just you know, thinking, I'm thinking you learn me. Yeah. I know, but I that wasn't my intention. I was just thinking you learned me. Oh, no. Okay, okay. I'm just going to read you this. I have great respect. Because I'll be, I'll be floundering. But I just, I don't know if you have to find it. Maybe it's like I don't know. Okay, well, I'm just checking. No. Morning, Jack. Hopefully, you didn't catch the bug. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> I still haven't found your check for the thousand dollars. 
Yeah, I, I asked my bookkeeper to find it. It wasn't a check. It was a. It was some kind of electronic payment. But I'll I'll find it for you, Jack. Okay. We're so just it, it was Venmo. I'll check Venmo again. Um, yeah, I maybe, I maybe. could have sworn it was Venmo, but I looked at Venmo and it's not. <clears throat> okay, so then it could be Square, I suppose. Yeah, I, I don't I, know. That's really I, weird. I, once I get through my deadlines, I promise I'll find it. No problem. Eileen's been giving me grief, so. Okay. <laughs> Well, somebody has to. Morning, Gary. I don't think they can hear us again. Well, it's audio yeah. test, audio test, one, two, three. Hey, Rand, can you hear us? I can hear you just fine, yes. They don't need to hear me. I don't really have anything important to say. <laughs> yeah, neither do I, so... Morning, Jim. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, we can hear each other. They they can't hear us though, so we can talk about them. They, well, how come they can't hear us? They they have they they seem to struggle with the whole audio thing. There, yeah. I don't know. We should we should figure it out. <laughs> so last week it was working, and he asked me to say something, and I just started moving my mouth. <laughs> Hey, Just messing with him. Sergeant of the Arms? Yes, he's here. All right. He's here today. But we can start with the pledge. I'm referring to Mike. So uh, please join me in the pledge of allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and its true republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four-way test over here, which is first, is it the third? Second, is it fair to all concerns? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And fifth, is it possible? Yes. And sixth, auction. Okay, it doesn't even come close to the way the former president, Brian. I know it. He would be dancing. Yeah, just witness. All right, Eileen's getting her phone. Oh, no, I have the quote. Oh, you have it ready to go. I am ready. All right. Um, it's from the immortal Maya Angelou, and I know I've used this quote before, but I just feel like it's so important. And it is, people will will forget what you say, people will forget what you do, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Ooh. Good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's the first time you've gotten in the class. <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin. Yes. You want to introduce our guest? I do. I do. So we've got, we're, we're making a presentation today to you, and we've got a great team. Uh, Leah Show is here. She's our business administrator. <laughs> Yeah, she she runs the place. <laughs> Michael McConnell, he's our one of our deputy chiefs. We're gonna do a little bit more of an in-depth uh intro here soon. This is Roy Wah, he's one of my bosses, a commissioner. <laughs> and then uh Troy Elmore, he's also a commissioner, and uh we'll talk a little bit more later. Okay. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> she does too. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everybody. This is quite the honor. Alrighty, so we um, we do have one anniversary, Joel's, um, and then uh, as far as Rotary anniversaries, Jack is uh, coming up here in the near future, and uh, so that's that's great. And then from an announcement standpoint, Jack, since you're not here, it actually is pretty 
pretty good timing because at our board meeting, uh, which was just this week, uh, we made the decision to not do the raffle anymore. <clears throat> and the reason for this is the state is really cracking down on any kind of gambling. And now they are requiring training for multiple people every year in order to maintain our gambling license, which we would only need for our friggin' $2 raffle. And I did call and talk to the state and I said, seriously? You know, this is required? Oh yeah, any, any form of gambling, you know, is covered. So um, Jack is unable to come in because uh, of probably a couple reasons, but- um, uh, Cause I took the gambling winnings. Okay, yeah, they're, they're not there anymore. So uh, bottom line is, is we didn't collect any money today. Uh, we will figure out at what point what to do with the, the accumulated earnings. And one option is obviously just to donate them to our foundation, which might have happened anyhow if somebody had actually won them. But we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, another thing that, uh, that we decided at the board meeting was that we're going to change the way we do corks and kegs in the future that we're we're going to actually have a committee that will will uh, basically operate from july through july and so that committee will will um, run corks and kegs starting in july all the way through the end of the process but then more, most importantly start doing setup for the next quirks and kegs the winter and spring of the, the following year because by now they're experts so that when the next committee takes over in July there'll already be a lot of stuff in, in, in place um, I think it's a great idea but, uh, Excellent. That's, that's what we're going to do <laughs> nice thing about committees is some people are really good at this kind of stuff and there's nothing to prevent them from continuing as part of the committee and maybe there'll be a different chair each time, but um, you know it doesn't doesn't matter. The important thing is to have some tribal knowledge going into each year, and and make sure we are, are as successful as we can be. Um, another thing, uh, just so everybody's aware, this is your last call to recommend or suggest a fund a cause for our upcoming event. Now, we have some great ideas already, but we wanted to make sure everybody has a chance to throw anything else out. We'll probably make a decision by next week. We're already reaching out to a, a few folks to get a, a sense of, you know, some of the some of the options that we've come up with. So keep that in mind and please shoot me an email, give me a phone call uh, or Eileen uh, if you have any any thoughts along those lines. We have a list. What was that? We have a list. A list of. Why would we do that? Yeah. Thank you both. I mean, I don't know. We start for suggest it so we don't suggest it again. Well, we 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 do. Um, but do we want to bias anything here? <laughs> I guess there wouldn't be a bias, but uh, what do you think, Eileen? I think the more knowledge, the better. All right. Well. Um, why don't we just have you throw that out and we'll just do a, our um, club services report a little bit okay. out of order. And why don't we, you want to kind of give us a summary? Oh, so now? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we'd go okay. to So um, there was discussion about um, possibly uh, putting together some um, inclusive playground equipment and Rochelle was going to reach out to the city. Uh, to find out what the possibility of that was, um, because that way we then make that available to everybody in our community, which as somebody who supports people with disabilities, I think that's really awesome, but I'm biased. Um, and then there was another discussion about bridge receiving, um, and that's really all we have at this point. So if you have another idea of where you would like uh, where bridge money to go within our community, please feel free to speak up because we want your feedback. 
Um, do you want me to finish with my club service mm -hmm. stuff? Oh, um, sure. So next week, um, on the 11th, we have a fireside at Westwick Court. Um, it's from five to seven. If you have time, please stop by. For those of you who don't drink wine, they do have cider and other beverages. So do not let that deter you. Please come and just, even if you can hang out for just a few minutes, it's a great way to support a local business. That's a great way to connect with your fellow Rotarians. Um, as for the auction, uh, I, uh, we really need tickets though. Tickets, tickets, tickets though. Um, so I posted, uh, Rand redid the save the date. Thank you, Rand. Um, we put it back out on social media. I put the sign up link. Um, tickets are $60 each, or you can do a couple's ticket, which is $120 for two. Um, that includes two drinks per person and some heavy appetizers, heavy, heavy appetizers, which are, um, provided by Unforgettable Eats, which is rooms for most of those of you who are from the community. Um, so please buy your tickets. Um, if you're a sponsor, please get your guest list to me because I have to enter them into the system. And then continue, I know this is Please turn in your baskets. And I think we have like 12 baskets and our events have less than 30 days. <laughs> so, thank you very much, you're amazing. Um, so please turn in your baskets. Um, oh, and I received the wine from um, Staff of Saint Michelle that's sitting in my office. We got three tastings. So um, please push it out on social media. We really, it's at Carlton Farms, for those of you who don't know, um, we really need a full house for us to be able to do the work that we do there. So thank you. Uh, uh, one more thing on the baskets. Do we uh, 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 have the service of packaging baskets up so people don't have to do the shrink wrap and all that. Well, Tracy sent out an email um, yesterday or the day before that she's willing to put them together. So if you have stuff that don't have baskets, bring it in a bag. Please do not bring alcohol to your school. We will pick that up in the parking lot. Um, and then we can put them together for you. Just be sure to include your form of what it's in, what's included and the price so that that helps us who are um, inputting it into the system that makes it a lot easier. Also, I think she needs baskets, right? Just empty baskets. To fill yeah, you have empty baskets. I know Tracy has some too, so we'll, I'll take whatever. Raquel? I have some baskets. Oh! Did I cover everything? Oh, Debbie, you, you have a question? Yeah, so also, if you have um, things that you want to put into a basket, maybe you don't have the base, but you have the item, you're welcome to come to my store anytime. And bring them, and we can put them together, and shrink wrap them, and bring them for you. Awesome. We have all that stuff there. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got the pickle cut and the mat and the those recyclable ones that mm -hmm. we use. Yeah, that would be wonderful. And we're open eleven to five, Tuesday through Sunday, so you can pretty much get down there. Thank you. And we do need a couple more live auction items. We have a couple of trips, which are amazing. We need more. So I don't mean to sound greedy, but please, if you've got something really cool that you think people would like to do, um. Please reach out to me. And that's all I have. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say, um, uh, going to the playground, so you know the lady who was here last year, uh, I don't remember her name, of the Skyline, looking for, looking to replace the, um, the whole playground. The yeah. playground up there. So she's already done half of it. It's done. It's It looks really great. Um, I was surprised that she raised that money that fast, but. There's a second section that would be she wants to get done and uh, that could be done. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't remember her name though. Oh, I'll find out. I was up there playing on the equipment the other day with my boys when she was there. I used Switzer. Look in the storage library for our living. No, <laughs> Sam Switzer. Yeah. I'm sorry? Heidi Switzer, Heather Switzer, I think. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I can find out through the school district, right? Because yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little one. Like, uh, I'll, I'll just reach out to Carrie Blankership. She'll oh. know. I'm on the Ed Foundation, so that'll work. Thank you. Jack, how about the treasure report? Um, well, a couple things about the corks and kegs first. Um, I was thinking of buying two tickets to let you guys decide who to give them to for free. Well, Jack, you have four tickets for your sponsorship. Yeah, but I mean, I I was going to buy tickets above and beyond that to oh, give wow. away. 
So I thought that would be one way to maybe encourage people to come. If you know somebody would come, you know, if you gave them free tickets. So awesome. okay. very just, just an idea. I mean, and then um, you mentioned about the alcohol and the baskets. I was going to do kind of hybrid alcohol and, and coffee stuff, but so should I put it all as one thing or not? So um, thank you for bringing that up. So I reached out to, um, I think her name's Kelsey. Kelsey. Um, and uh, we got a confirmation that we can have hard alcohol in the baskets, but you cannot drink it there because that it's against our policy. So please leave your baskets and consume your alcohol when you get home. So yes, you can put it together if that was your right. Yeah, yeah, that's my question. Okay, yeah, then yeah. I was going to put it together this weekend and and get it over to you. Okay. Um, as for the financial thing, uh, yeah, I would say the main thing is to get those tickets sold, so that we at least break even on the on the event, at least in terms of the the food thing, and then uh, whatever we can do. Yeah. Oh, and Brian is so generously willing to store our stuff. Company. Just bring an extra bottle of whiskey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's still the inventory of the alcohol. Sorry, inbound and outbound. Don't clear for this because you'll throw up water. <laughs> All right, Gary. Uh, follow up just a little bit on corks and cakes. If you're really looking for ideas as far as baskets, you might check over at the library. Friends of the library put together fairly decent uh, baskets of items. Last year, we bought a basket that had uh, was all about birds, books, all kinds of stuff. It was valued at one fifty or one sixty, and I think it went for that. So, if you're having a hard time, just walk over across the street. They usually have them there. We've got another basket that's coming. Uh, on birds pretty soon. Uh, we're waiting for the lady to get done with it. <clears throat> Just something else to think about. Um, as far as runnery, the next board meeting is going to be on Tuesday, November 7th, election day. Um, so uh, we will be meeting and watching the results of a few things coming in. Um, see if we got a new sewer district uh, commissioner and such. Um, we like have a, a uh, new like member application from uh, uh, somebody that Eileen has sponsored, Daniel Booker, uh, has turned in his uh, application. And I was a myth on uh, Tuesday night. I failed to mention that Debbie is interested in joining our club, maintaining, maintaining her membership and her other club as well which just simply means we don't report it to RI. Uh, so we will be processing those two shortly. And the board meeting, is it going to be at Brian's office again? Well, there's plenty of alcohol there, so we could probably have it there. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes to the highest bidder, though. That's yeah, exactly. That's true. And uh, just don't forget, uh, I know some of you are already going, but... VIP empty bowls tonight at the Lake, New Lake Stevens uh, Community Food Bank. And tomorrow from 4.30 to 6, same location. Should be a fun fun time again. Yeah. All right. Ron? Well, you guys took everything. Uh, so, corks and kegs, but everybody said everything. Uh, only reminder is, uh, so our continuous fireside at the brewery is not going to happen this month because... We had a fireside that the next day at Rest of the Okay. All right. Brian. Um, some issue with Club Runner not letting us send out or set up the registration for the Halloween deal. So I will email everybody individually. Please email me back when you can make it. We're going to start setting up at 2 30. And I guess the, uh, the actual event takes place from 4 to 7. So we'll set up. Uh, at 2.30 and then break down to 7. So if you can save part of it, if you can save for the whole thing, if you can just show up, it doesn't matter how you want to do it, but let me know if you know you can make it, just so I have an idea how many people, especially in the setup, just so we can make sure there's enough people that will set it up. Because 
everybody tends to show up for the fun part, which is awesome, but the setup would be good just so we get it done. Yeah. In fashion. Is this for the event on the 31st? It is. Yep. Yeah. We're going to set up a, we're sharing with Arts and Parks, and we'll set up a 10 bunch of the canopy. And then we'll set up the, I, I think it's floor he's going to bring. Oh, he's going to bring the dragon, I believe. So we'll we'll set that up. So yeah, Fred the dragon will be there. Yeah. yeah. Kind of cool. It'll be fun. Uh, Rochelle's going to get candy. She's going by to get it today or tomorrow. So other than that, that's it right now. Okay. Um, and then uh, next on the list who's present is Rand. Do you have anything to report? Morning, everybody. Sorry I couldn't be there. Um, on corks and kegs, I follow Jack's example. I have two tickets that I purchased, even though I'm going to be in San Diego. So everybody is welcome to give those away if you can attract some some people you think will benefit the cause. Uh, we put some money behind last night. We we boosted the social media post on corks, corks and kegs in the Lake Stevens area, plus 10 miles. So hopefully that will drive up some traction on that marketing. Uh, and I don't think I have anything else. I will say though that I'm a, a manager of a local mayoral campaign. And on November 7th, I believe at my home, I am hosting the election results party for that mayoral candidate, which means that uh, the only way I'd probably be able to attend that board meeting is if you make Zoom available. That works. I'm running against myself. It's not me. Are you going to win or lose? He's not a silly partner. I asked myself some really tough questions. Did you ask for them though? Yeah. All right. Do we have a sergeant at arm? Yes. That. And can I suggest that you start with our Zoomers first, because I need to do a little bit of technical transition now. You got Zoomers, uh, will, at some point here in the near future, we'll have to cut you off on audio, uh, but I'll put the uh, chat box up. So since so, we don't, don't have a uh, raffle, we're kind of going to go around for happy bucks. And I have a question if you can answer this. I know that table there is not allowed to answer. Oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, who do the Seahawks play? If you can answer this, then you're exempt from a fine. And if you can't, then you owe it over. So who do the Seahawks play this coming weekend? Cares. No one. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so, He's paying everybody's money. He's everybody's money. Yeah, okay. We'll just go around and let the dogs from everybody. Yeah, that's him. Okay. Why not you? Hi, I'm I have everything else. I was just running. There I I I I got all these guys here, okay? <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Another question that you might be interested in. So I'm kind of thinking like um, the, Lake the Lake Stevens School District inspires what? They inspire what? Yes, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we'll uh, just go to Happy Bucks now. <laughs> I think you ought to find. Yeah. I think you ought to find yourself. No, it's not. Look what he did. He ordered a shirt. 
Really? See that? Yeah. And see what is on the front. <laughs> <laughs> so you ought to find yourself five bucks for you. I will. I'll put five bucks in there. Five bucks in there. So. Let's go to Happy Bucks. Okay. We, uh, Why don't you start with these folks? Please. Yeah. Okay. How about Happy Bucks over here on the on the? Rand, you got some Happy Bucks for us. Are you happy today? I'm thrilled today. You know, I, we just bought our home about four months ago, and this week we had a uh, company come in and move 75 truckloads of dirt and put in a thousand feet of retaining wall. And we had another company come in and completely landscape my property. So I got to tell you, I'm really, really happy to see all of that work getting done. That's cool. Awesome. Well, thanks. How about Jim? You can hear us okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm happy. Actually, I had a cool thing happened. Um, your red truck had a trans transmission problem. And I've had this kind of problem before in the past. It, it happened one time we were out in... Monroe doing a, a cleanup one time, but um, I took it up to AMG Auto you know, Transmissions there up by the Creator Zone, and uh, they spent some time looking for it and what the problem was, and it turned out to be a fuses. So they changed out all the fuses and stuff like that, and so I went in to pick it up, and and they go, you know, they told me what happened, and they go, eh, no charge, we don't charge for fuses, but the guy did a lot of you know exploratory work trying to find. Uh, what the problem was, but uh, but that was really cool that they just kind of you know did that. My wife ended up making a whole bunch of cookies for him, so <laughs> we, we did deliver some cookies. <laughs> Great, thanks. Jim. How about yeah, you I'm happy. I so far still am testing negative for COVID, even though my brother who's visiting me has it. So yeah, he'll be over it, so that'll be good. Well, he leaves today, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't have to worry about it after today. Uh, okay, thanks. How about you, Don? Well, happy for? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm happy that my dock project is officially done. And now they're working on my neighbor's dock, and they're almost done with that. Wow. So we're taking the rounds. Awesome. Good old Frank with perfect dock. Oh, dock. Wow. Where, dock. Where's he out of? Out of Lake Stevens. Wow. Good old Frank. Good old friend. Good old friend. Thanks. You're looking happy today. Yeah. Are you going on vacation soon? Uh, I'm not happy about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what? Because I'm not. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy today. Uh, we just, I'm excited to go to the food bank event tonight. Hang out. It'll be a fun party. Uh, and then uh yeah we've been really excited we've been able to donate a ton of uh maker days to nonprofits in the community we did a couple of donations to sherwood and i'm super excited we were the first one to buy out right on the spot uh, which is really cool and we'll we want to donate one for the corks and kegs as well um but they're really fun they're like a whole day experience where you bring your family and go make with all these different professionals. So you learn lasers and 3D printing and sewing and all this fun stuff. Um, yeah, so that's been really fun being able, we're doing the K-9 event for the police. We're doing stuff with the Children's Museum and the YMCA. And uh, yeah, cool. And also announcement, we have a, I think I made a comment, but we have a really fun uh, party on October 28th. We're doing like a haunted house, uh, but for adults, so it'll be a bar, DJ, dance floor, but a haunted house. So we're calling it a Halloween ball, nice. and it's going to be pretty decked out because all the creatives and makers in this community are are helping design it. What hours is that, Chris? What? What hours is that? Uh, it's seven till till whatever. So Rochelle and Amy leave the dance floor. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Yeah, I have some flyers, so I'll pass around. Yeah, cool. How about you, Ron? Uh, happy Friday. Excited to have our guest speakers here today. Yeah, interesting yeah. to hear what they have to say. You guys are white. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard the speech before? And excited what Chris just mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Happy to be here. Excited for tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Be great. Hope to see some of you guys there. Awesome. How are you doing? 
Thank you, my five yeah, earlier. Yeah, yes, I was fine <laughs> once, but yes, for yeah. sure. I'm just happy to be here. I'm excited for tonight and um, can't wait for more good things to happen yeah. for all of us. Well, I'm sorry I'm going to have to miss tomorrow, as I mentioned to you uh, tonight as well, but otherwise I would be there. I, there was a picture posted by Stevens Creek Elementary about some goals I think that the uh, PTA work done. So I missed the last couple of meetings because of work. Too many kids are moving in. They don't have enough bus drivers. So when you're done with your gig, you guys please come and join. <laughs> so I missed uh, four weeks of uh, meetings. One week I was in uh, Yellowstone Atlantic. We were being laughing. It's been uh, like almost 20 years I finally got my wife out camping. The big deal was she didn't have electricity for the uh, for your hair, yes. And then last week I was in the nation's capital. So I was there about 50 years ago during Watergate. I got to like shake hands with Kennedy and McGovern. I didn't see a senator this time at all. And the White House tour, I didn't that last time. So I got this because you can't get within two or three hundred yards of the guy. It's cool. I'm happy I got my COVID and my flu shot this week. Well, they do have COVID shots out there. They do. Mm -hmm. Locked in the Hagen's and oh wow, got it done. You gotta get money. Again, I'm happy. I'm always happy. Well, no, but usually uh, I'm happy for good health. My uh, children, my daughter, who son James. She didn't have bad luck. She wouldn't have any at all. Uh, narrowly avoided a very serious motorcycle accident. All she did was break her baby. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, good. Now, if I can get her off the motorcycle, yeah. <laughs> good luck. So, good health and good thing. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to be here today, and I'm happy to be able to uh, babysit my granddaughter. Oh, well. I'm doing well. Um, I'm a part of the Monroe Rotary and New Rotary, so it's my first time, you know, uh, secret agent getting to visit another club and uh, see how you guys get made. And so, did you have the former dance coming up? And this is all, like I said, new to me, but it's cool. See what they did to get them to join. I know. See the back brace. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's not a hard market. I'm saying they're fun though. They're still standing. So I'm still standing. And yeah, I'm happy I got this sweet collar instead of going to some surgery. So, oh, that's well. Well. Mr. McConnell, doesn't your club have an event coming up soon? Yes, on November fourth, the bar and dance. That's right. Mm -hmm. Information on the website. Oh, and fun. so. Who's the in? I'm in at the fairgrounds. Oh, at the bar. Yes, I'm um, really happy to be here. Every time you come here, I'm so welcoming. And it's just, it's just nice to walk in early on a Friday morning and just put all, all you guys, yeah, the energy. Cool. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, I've been a slacker, Rotarian. It's been a whirlwind summer. I have Incredible trip. Uh, like Debbie, uh, got, I got to probably talk about this before. I got to go with the, an official delegation actually of state legislators, my sister's Montana state senator, to visit Ireland and visit Belfast. It was unbelievable. And then I came home and then took my son Daniel, who got off probation, took him to Austin, Texas to see Pearl Jam. So uh, oh, that, oh, was, that was pretty cool. It was uh, really, really cool. Yeah, it, was a great it was a great concert. Um, so it was PLA out of the state. What's so, that? Probation. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, okay. no, I didn't. Kevin, did you bring some passion back from the fire department? I didn't. I, 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 uh, next time. Next time. Next time. Next time. No, it was great, but great to see everybody and super thankful to have uh, my team here today and, and thankful to be able to talk to everybody about what's going on. So good to see you. Awesome. That's cool. Uh looking forward to empty bowls tonight and happy to spread. Awesome. Chris. Well, empty bowls obviously Friday. Actually kind of happy for you to stop finding. I am a constituent. If you kept it up, oh, I was not gonna vote for you. Yeah, you're done. Not you're done. Done. 
I am happy it's Friday. I'm really happy, and I forgot to mention this in my report that First Financial Northwest Bank is going to provide us volunteers for, for our corks and kegs. Excited for tonight from Peoples. I have ACS Gala tomorrow. And thank you, Chris, for your generosity and support of Sherwood. We really truly appreciate it. Awesome. Woo! Hey, the national bucks. Okay. The last so here's one I promise. Um, I'm happy to be here. And happy for the empty bowls. I guess I'm going to be taking the hangar next to Chris. It's fun to do. So I'm going to get two of us for alcohol tonight. So. Oh, cool. Nice. Cool. Give them four heavy. Give them four heavy fours. Yeah. Give them yeah. four heavy yeah. right. yeah. What for them one for you? I test mud. It was still working just fine. It got me to run a great thing out. Um, so here's my happy dog. Thank you very much. Um, happy it's Friday. We're looking for an empty bowl. We want to go my friends there. And I'm um, super happy that uh, we was not breaking the last year. Yeah. Hey, um, that's for uh, uh, empty bowls tonight as well. I'm looking forward to it and uh, just, just have to be part of the community. Great things about I'm good. I'm happy it's Friday. I'm more happy that I'm able to start coming back. And uh, yeah, freshly due to a new schedule that has been on quite yet Friday. So that's I was you. So I'm uh, happy back. I already did my happy back last week for Ireland, but the low continues, and as you can see, the bass are back there. I brought some James in the back with me. So, um, but I'm not happy back this for the fire district, which I gave. Uh, I just want to see time hearing it. So I gave a testimony at the chamber, which I won't do again. I'm going to start crying. But uh, this is a happy back for empty bowls. I'll also be there. So, and then um, that segues into my buy one because this is a shameless promotion. Happy Bucks for uh, my store. We're happy to help support the empty bowls tonight. You'll see some of our things there. And then um, a lot of you know our story and my story. We know me and I were members here for many years. And then I switched to the Everett Club because I've worked over that area. And then, um, as you know, he passed away a couple of years ago. So, it's really hard to think about like what to do for our anniversary for our, our my store because you know we were down in Seattle we bought it four years ago we've been open in Snohomish for one year the store has been around for eleven and then I was doing this trip to Ireland and you know coming up on the anniversary of when he was diagnosed I just couldn't get my head around you know anything but going on that trip to Ireland like reset me and refreshed me and I'm like okay we're gonna do an eleven four one anniversary celebration. <laughs> So October is going to be our big, like, fun promotion. George the Giant Pump Pumpkin is coming back and being delivered on Saturday. So if anyone has a, you know, little spare forklift around that you can bring to help us offload him at 3 o'clock on Saturday, let me know. Um, so he is a weight contest. So Ross, my friend in the Everett Club, throws Giant Pumpkin. Sure. So um, he's a great photo op and fun part of our celebrations. And then we're going to do 11 product giveaways in the month of October for contests with drawing, which George is one of them, uh, George the two, second, I should say, and one special event on the 28th where we're doing like October and Christmas, Christmas in October, sorry, <laughs> I'm still need my coffee to wake up, um, <clears throat> because October typically our sales drop, and while the store is doing really well, it still needs to make more income to support me since it's my only income now. So I thought, why don't I make a final message? So if you don't know about our little store, we're down in Snohomish on the corner of First and Avenue D, right at the bridge across from Anthony's Fish House and we do olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and one of the products. So we'll do um, various specials and promotions all month long. That's my five bucks on my shameless blood. <laughs> and now Love you it. might not want me as a member, but like Ralph and Mark said, I don't know if I'll be a member of any club, but what happened as a member? <laughs> What's the name Most of your shop? A Bit of Taste, Snohomish Olive Oil Company. It's yes, fabulous. To, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> that, <laughs> and I have cards if you want, if you don't know, and want something to remind you guys. Awesome. I'm happy that everybody's here today. My hat's still up soon. Back to you. All right. Kevin. 
You're on. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Excellent. All right. How's everybody doing? Woo! Woo! Everybody doing good? All right. Let's everybody stand up. Here we go. Stand up. All right. Okay. I'm going to let you off the hook. We're not going to do the hokey pokey, but we're going to do some Jack LaLanne's to warm up a little bit. Uh, nothing like some Jack LaLanne's to start off a taxation presentation. My what? Your unit I know, I need my unit card. Okay, here we go. One and two and three and four, five and six and seven and eight, and that is it. All right, you guys are good. You can see it. I'm letting you off the hook on the hokey pokey yeah. unless you want to do it. I just okay. want to turn myself. We're just going to turn yourself. I'm in and out about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to put my fire department hat on. Um, Thank you all uh, for inviting us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we are gonna talk to you a little bit about what's going on with the fire district. Um, our funding, our lifeblood is our levies. And uh, the way the system is, um, we have to come to the public every couple of years to ask to renew our levies, to keep us going. Uh, and it's to help, up with, help out with rising costs and projects, and I'm gonna talk about a couple really cool projects. One is across the street, Station 81. Uh, we wanna rebuild that station. There's been a plan in the works to do this for several years, and the levy that, that's gonna be on the ballot is gonna help get that done. Um, after the, the meeting today, um, we're gonna to take a tour of Station 81. If you're interested, wanna show you, and we'll kind of show you why it needs to be rebuilt. Um, it is, it's a very good station, great people in the station, but it's time has definitely come to, to be rebuilt. Um, I want to ask, I'm going to lean on my team again. I know we introduced you, but it, I think it's fun and interesting to actually get to know what some of the folks do in the district. So Leah, can I lead on you to reintroduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do? Sure. So Leah Schoen, I'm your business administrator. And so what our team does is we take care of everything from risk management to finance to payroll. So we take care of the people who come out and take care of you. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the fire district is like any business. Um, you know, we got the big trucks and the firefighters, but we have to have the staff to handle what Leah does. Payroll, finance, the auditor the IRS, uh, you name it. And so because of Leah, we run a very tight ship. Thank you, Leah. Michael? Uh, my name is Michael McConnell. I'm one of the deputy chiefs at Storm Street Regional. And so the team I work with is the community relations team. We get out into our local schools, public events. We're very strategic regarding um, how we can do fall prevention and different demographics. So part of that is another aspect of my job, which is strategic analysis. So through that, we are looking at census data, on run data, and putting that all together to try and identify and define risk within our community and make sure that for operations, it's part of the deployment of our resources with our community relations team, that we're really targeting um, to maximize our effectiveness and try and increase health and safety within the community. And then also there's some of the, the bones of the organization our policies and procedures and making sure that the business side, as far as the way we do business um, is in line. And then that ties into another piece, which is our accreditation that we reached recently achieved and the chief will uh, kind of tell you a little bit more about that, but that is an ongoing process and my team helps to manage and maintain that we're meeting those, those standards and that we're moving through the continuous improvement process. Thank you, Michael. Commissioner? Uh, my name is Roe Waugh. I'm a commissioner, so I guess I'm a politician. Uh, <laughs> I never in my life thought I would be, but I've been doing it for 32 years. I'm from the Clearview Malty area. Uh, we've all come together uh, to, to merge different departments to help our efficiency. But as a politician, my job is basically to make sure that the team has the tools to be able to provide the public the best possible service um, with the tax dollars that the citizens are willing to give us, make sure our firefighters are safe and that they have the tools they need to do their job. So thank you very much. 
for all you guys do for the community and for supporting your local fire district. Roy, thank you. A um, couple things about Roy that he didn't mention is Roy is a paramedic and uh, ran the paramedic training program at Harborview. Um, and so uh, uh, he's actually a legend, helped build, not, not kidding, you helped build that program. So he has incredible wisdom and insight. Uh, you know, obviously world famous medic, King County Medic One program that we pattern all everything we do from. So uh, Roy's a big deal. Wait a minute. I had to look up who Jack Delaney is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Troy Elmore, I'm the current chair for the Board of Commissioners for Snowmatch Regional Fire and Rescue. Um, I came from the Lake Stevens side of the merger. I've been a commissioner out here for 20, just finished in 24 years. A regular job as a battalion chief in the city of Montecito, and I'm a local alliance builder. Cool. Troy, very dedicated commissioner from Lake Stevens, and uh, he has uh, supports us incredibly. Uh, great commissioner. You'll see his signs around town. Uh, I'm so sorry about the signs. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, uh, Troy's awesome and supports us and Lake Stevens very well. So I'll get going here. Uh, again, Proposition 1 is going to be on the ballot. Uh, and what's that? Oh. <laughs> they know me. Sergeant. I am Deputy Chief. Uh, no. I'm in the support services division, so I do a lot of things that support those guys that run out on the streets, your houses. But... Uh, I oversee uh, logistics, uh, facilities, and fleet. And a lot more than that. Yeah. Ron, uh, I can't believe Ron's to-do list and what he does is amazing. Keeping our uh, fire stations maintained with, with his team, uh, our fleet. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't know how he does what he does. James? We should add that Ron is a product of that training program, paramedic class yeah. at Harborview. Yeah, many years yep. ago and served as a paramedic. Committee. And I know Roy a lot because he helped me get through that program. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Oh, wait, I just got to. All right. All right. All right. Um, so Proposition 1 on the November ballot. Um, again, the levies are our lifeblood. The renewal of this fire levy is going to help us replace firefighters that are retiring. It's going to help us do rebuild Station 81. And then there's another project, two other projects in Monroe that I'm going to talk about. Um, so who we are, we, we serve about 160,000 people. Um, the, the green is the fire district. Uh, it's 135 square miles. We go on about 16,000 alarms a year. I know it looks odd that the greens don't touch, but it's actually not a big deal. Um, we, uh, the, the Snohomish in the middle is fire district four. We respond with them, work together with them. Uh, we have computer dispatch that, so it doesn't really matter what fire district you're from. The closest unit goes to the call. Um, we are actually talking with Snohomish about merging. So you'll probably see, uh, my guess is in a couple of years, there's a pretty good chance, not for sure, but a pretty good chance that'll all be green in between the two greens. Um, we actually are, we're working on an agreement with Snohomish to share their fantastic, beautiful training facility. It's uh, out Machias as you're, uh, Machias Road as you're going towards Snohomish. Um, we, as a, as a county too, we work together. We, ha we share a training academy for recruit firefighters. Uh, we do whatever we can to work together during COVID. We we all came together and kind of batten down the hatches, help each other out. Um, Christine, thank you. I will never forget you reaching out to me for for uh, PPE masks and things at the early phases. So thank you. Um, but we all came together and got through it as a team. Um, what we do, most of you know this already, but of course, fire suppression. We put out fires. Emergency medical services are about. 80% of what we do of our alarms. Within that, uh, we categorize it, our services, basic life support, and those are EMTs. Those are basic injuries. This isn't gonna sound basic, but maybe a broken arm, somebody that's ill. Um, and, but then if somebody gets really sick, uh, cardiac, chest pain, uh, trauma, 
then we are so fortunate to work with paramedics like Ron and Roy that were trained in Harborview. And, and I, I my kind of thought about it is it's the hands of the doctors out in the field, providing medications, intubating patients so we can breathe for them. So we have some outstanding paramedics. Um, everybody is at least an EMT, trained to the EMT level in the, in the department. Special operations, these are rare, but incidents that do occur like a hazardous materials response, chemical spills, things like that. Technical rope and confined space rescue, somebody stuck on a cliff or in a tower or a tree, uh, confined space, maybe somebody stuck in a tank or a vault. Uh, water rescue, pretty common. Um, Lake Stevens, uh, we've had some rescues. Um, very, very busy in the Monroe area, the Skycomish River, there's, you guys you see in the news, there's a lot of work out there, a lot of rescues out there. Vehicle extrication, it's actually probably shouldn't be in this list as a technical rescue because we do it quite a bit and it's not a rare, but it is, it's a, it's a, it's a technical thing to learn. Of course, you see the jaws of life there. So we want to get people out of a car as quickly as we can and into the hospital and on the, in the operating room, you know, within the, an hour, There's, we talk about a golden hour, but really it's as soon as possible. So those, those tools and that specialized equipment does that. And the firefighters that are trained to do that, taking apart a car to get somebody out. Um, and then of course, public information and education. We love being in the schools, uh, teaching kids safety uh, and smoke detectors and escape routes. We love it because then they go home and they bug their parents. Mom, dad, what, you know, what about the smoke detectors? And so they're, they're little secret agents of safety. Um, fire marshal services. We, we know that if we can keep people safe, if we can prevent fires, prevent injuries, that's way better. Uh, of course, it, it's safer for people, better for human beings, but it also saves um, money. Businesses that have a fire, st um, um, statistically, about 70% that have a big fire don't come back and don't come back in business. So when we're doing our fire safety inspections, we want to keep you in business. We want to keep you thriving. Um, continuous improvement. Uh, we're dedicated to that. Um, the, because actually of your support over the years uh, and you know the commissioner's support and a lot of hard work from our team, um, this year we received international accreditation. Uh, there's only eight fire districts in the state that are accredited. Um, and this is a good thing. It, accredited agent, agencies typically have a, a lower insurance rates in their district. They also have typically better uh, fire um, fire saves and fire you know and life saves in general. In general, uh, this is a big deal. What happened was we started we we had we had to put our capital plans, strategic plans together, our operational plan, make sure that they were they aligned with the accreditation process and team and na national and international standards. And then uh, a group of fire chiefs came out and audited us, looked at everything we do from training, safety, our hoses, um, our mechanical work that we do on our fire trucks, everything, you name it. And they said, yep, you guys are doing a good job. They gave us some recommendations, some areas of improvement. We said, thank you. Um, and so it, and then we went in front of a board and they they granted us accreditation. So really cool, really good thing. The, the very important part, probably the best part about it is uh, once you're accredited, it's a commitment to maintain that accreditation. So we file reports each year on how we're doing. And then in five years from now, we'll go back in front of the board and say, hey, we did this, we're committed to it. We're, you know, we're not, we're not done. And it's about continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we do everything we can to be fiscally responsible and accountable to you. Uh, we operate under a balanced budget, um, 38 years of clean audits with the Washington State Auditor. And then all of our meetings are open. Uh, you, can, you, you can attend them online if you want as well. So we fund our operations 
you know, the, the, the majority of our funding comes from a fire levy and an EMS levy. Um, last in 21, uh, the voters approved a fire levy lid lift. Uh, and it's since then, so the lid lift was to restore it back to $1.50. Since then, the rates dropped to $1.14. And that's for $1,000 of assessed value. Thank you. $1,000 of assessed value. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate that. Um, another challenge that we have is the Board of Fire Commissioners each year can raise our levy rates by 1% to, to try to catch up with costs and, and uh, cost of living and costs. But we can't raise our levy any more than that unless we go to the voters and ask for a levy lid lift. And essentially, so same thing in 21, that's what we're doing this year. We're asking voters Voters, would you consider moving the levy from a dollar fourteen back to a dollar fifty? So on the ballot, you'll see Proposition One, and that it restores a fire levy to a dollar fifty per thousand of assessed property value. And so, um, I want to be really clear: this is a tax increase. Um, this is helping us keep up with rising costs. So uh, to calculate the cost, it would cost you. It's it's thirty. It's about thirty six dollars per one hundred thousand on the value of your property. Um, again, proposition one. Um, it's it, and oh, I'm going to talk next. The next slide. I think we talk about what it's going to do. Okay. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to continue to backfill our retiring firefighters and support staff. Um, we're going to rebuild Station eighty one right across the street. Um, in Monroe, there's an older station. You'll see a picture in a minute. That's kind of it's not in a, the best spot to serve the greater good of the public. So it's an aging station. It's, it's kind of funky. It looks like a house. You'll see it in a minute. We want to move it to a better location, yeah, kind of near the core of Monroe, so we can better respond. Uh, and then Station 31 Vehicle Repair Shop. We have an we have incredible mechanics. We have eight mechanics. Um, and they are amazing. Uh, they, um, they, so if we have a, some, something fail, the rig goes to the mechanics and they get on it and they get it back in service. Uh, so they're amazing. And they're operating partially out of a tent. For 15 years, they've been working out of this tent. So the, this levy will help them get, get a, a proper kind of addition to the shop bill. And I'll show you in a minute. And then um, the federal government uh, pays fire districts or some money for Medicaid transports. And that funding is um, estimated to be cut in half. And so this will, this will help with that. We expected it. Um, so it's not an emergency, but it's just gonna, it will help replace some of that funding. Um, so here's a picture of the, the tent that we've been operating, that our mechanics been working in for 15 years. And it, it's it's right next to a shop. The shop is a two bay. It's a good shop, but the tent we need the tent. We need the facility. There's always a, a rig in that tent being worked on. Uh, last year, um, I think Michael, you helped identify a big problem. The tent is on asphalt, and oils and things have gone to the asphalt, so the asphalt is failing. Uh, in winter time, you go in there, the tent's cold. I mean, it's just it's crazy. So we want to replace the tent with <laughs> with a structure with a proper structure. Uh, this is station 32 in Monroe. As you can see, it's kind of a house. It's actually a plan of a jiffy lube. Um, and so so um, we've come a long way in, in firefighting. We know that we need to store turnout gear in a proper location to keep it, keep it safe in a way, you know, out of the way. We need to have facilities to clean our aid equipment um, and decontaminate ourselves after alarms. We need to have proper HVAC to make sure that there's good ventilation, lots of things. Anyway, so that's that station 32 in Monroe. I'm sorry, it's 30. Or it'd be quick here. Of course, cross street. We'll go walk cross street. Seismically, this is out of date um, and not up to code. And then also the, for the same reasons I talked a minute ago, we need to, it just it, it needs some improvements for our firefighters and our equipment. We're also excited. We're going to put a community room on there too. I'll show you. Yeah. This is uh this is a um, kind of a rendition we had done. Oh uh, gosh, about five years ago, 
um, in a planning phase. We got a lot of, we got some good planning ahead on station 81. So we are ready to get going on it. So cool. there'd be a little community room probably over here, wraparound space here. And that's kind of a, a little bit of a vision that we have, but we can't wait to work with you in the community on what it will ultimately look like. You know, some ideas we've tossed around is could we have it match the mill or kind of be a, you know, a sister ship to the mill. Um, but uh, we get, we're excited about having it be, you know, Lake Stevens. So um, anyway, more to come on that. Um, thank you to the best rotary club <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Appreciate it. So prop one on, on the November ballot, uh, all about replacing our firefighters, uh, station 81, station 32, um, and then uh, the shop get, getting, getting out of the tent. But anyway, that's all I have. Thanks a lot. And I hope you'll come with me. And if there's any questions, please let me know. Gary. Well, the biggest question is, what are you going to do with the personnel when you tear down 81? We're going to find a place to put them. We might rent a house. Um, that's that's going to be a challenge. We, we actually, I'm glad you brought this up. The, our fire station in Machias um, is, is like it had a kitchenette. It was a, it was a volunteer fire station, not meant for people to to be there twenty four hours. It's undergoing a remodel, and so um, the firefighters there. We're just we're going to move them actually to Station eighty two, right right here in Lake Stevens. We did the calculations. And we figured it's going to be about eight eight months that we did the run calculations, and it will be a, a, you know, a little bit of a delay, but it's the, the best thing we can find. Yes. During a prior remodel of that station, we stayed in a portable trailer outside. So that, that's an option here. Yep, maybe. yep. Yeah, that's uh, across the street. Yeah, portable. We're, we're going to do whatever we can. Yeah. So are, with this new remodel, <clears throat> are you going to take up that lot now because you know the gravel lot and aquafest so i'm just asking the question yes we will okay um yeah and i know it'll be, make people uh, grumpy that want to go to the brewery <laughs> <laughs> move the but, brewery into the community please. one thing that we're talking about though uh and i've talked with the mayor about this is um on the uh and we've talked as, as a team is somewhere maybe you know that that parking lot closer to town where where the new roundabout might be going is we're thinking about some kind of a, I don't know if we call it a memorial or a tribute to public service. So we're thinking about that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious. I kind of figured that was the case. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a- No, it's all good. good we need to, yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, between the roundabout, Kevin's project and the development on the corner, that whole, this whole area, Place to go. Where's the roundabout going? 20th and May. From Fort Titus? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger than Davies, but smaller. And it's a traffic service. Debbie? From there, it's um, a traffic quick, there. quick question for you. Does the chamber meeting, I, I don't think it was one of the guys here, but one of the others said something about they responded. Remember that fire responded to like last month? Yes. And they said something about the people had their bedroom doors closed. Yes. And that helped them. And I've never heard that. Yes, really. Tell me about that. I, I have cats that come in and out of my room all night long, and now I'm feeling that risk. Okay, please keep your bedroom doors closed. Um, it just keeps the smoke out. So if you have a fire, um, and that's typically how people die or become injured, it's carbon monoxide and the products of combustion smoke, you're sleeping and then you, you, you don't wake up in the carbon. Yep, yep. Yeah. So if you keep your door closed, keeps the smoke out. And then um, and then if you do wake up and there's a fire, you know, you touch your door, stay, stay low, yeah. crawl, touch your door, see how hot it is. And then um, you might be better to go out of your window or wait for us to help you out if your window. Yeah, my window was in the upper story, so yeah. the smoke would come up and kill me, right? Um, it, 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 keep that door closed. And then, and then the other thing is, you can get yourself an escape ladder. Uh, probably Ace has them. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> there's a floor there. <laughs> a little escape ladder. My mom has one. She's on the second floor on Orcs Island. Yeah. Yeah. Yep.
Yeah, up until this point, I felt agile enough to climb out my window and deal with the roof. Now, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to say, though, that it's very important that we vote for this Prop 1 position because, after all, we want the best crew to come and help us to save us. Maybe not so much a fire, but if you're having a stroke or a heart attack or a fire, we want the best to come. So, please vote yes. This is something that our club can uh, agree to endorse because we don't endorse candidates, but propositions such as this we can endorse. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, looking forward to seeing uh, many of you tonight. It should be a lot of fun. And uh, anyway, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. All right, hopefully everybody gets to take the tour. Uh, I assume we'll probably just be leaving okay. like pretty quickly here. So being adjourned. Oh,